Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 23 of 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Uh, just a few quick seconds while we finish getting set up here. Uh, it's always a little bit of a race once we hit... Oh, uh, sorry. Everybody, hold on just one second. Just get this set up the way that it should be, and... Oh, one more thing to check. Believe it or not, we do try to set all this stuff up in advance, but there's a couple things that have to happen after the stream starts, and I think that we are ready. Now, as you can see here, we are 97% of the way through the story, 76% of the way through analysis, and then 84% of the way through destruction, which is the combat missions. Uh, we're going to start with one of those here. We have one, two, three, four, five left, and all of the world to reason to believe that there's going to be some sort of additional fight after that, only because this doesn't look quite like 84%, but we're going to see. We're going to see how it goes, and uh, yeah, let's get started. And hello to Caroluna. Caroluna, I hope that you've had a great Monday. Uh, mine was very productive. There's some work days when we start a, screen, a stream, and I say, boy, today really ran me down, and there's some days where, you know what, we're busy, but got a lot done, and I feel pretty good about it. So, uh, fortunately, we're into that second one here. Now, uh, we have a number of people that are in danger of being in brain overload, but only one who actually is. So we do want to have Mira and Minami on the team. Let me just take a quick look here. So here's Mira. So he's going to be brain overloaded next time. And then so is Minami. Uh, oh boy. You know what? So is everybody. Everybody who we don't bring with us. Oof. Okay. Well... Let's put on the only other person that isn't going to be brain overloaded. And what we'll have to do is uh, figure it out from there. Now, I've got three of six. Let's take a look to see what we're dealing with. Horde of workers and hunter kaiju. And I think the hunters, I think those are the flying guys. So big swarms of individual enemies. Not really productive here, but a good day altogether, says um, Caroluna. Awesome. Allow me. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, yeah, so basically, now we're choosing who do we not get access to on the next mission unless we sort of go back and, and blitz through one that we've already done to just get people off uh, off of uh, brain overload. So we've, uh, we've got two G3s that we want to have in order to do our bonus objective. We don't have any G2s, so let's take a quick look to see who is the lowest level, and it is Juro for some reason. Let's go. That brings up to five, and so, gosh. I guess what we'll do now is just figure out who's the lowest level person. Actually, no, I'm gonna take that back, and I'll tell you why. Um, Ogata and Saikigahara, they're G1s. They're very, very good at close-in targets, but we want guys, if it's gonna be hordes of little guys, hordes of drones, we want enemies that are, uh, um, sentinels that can hit a, a variety of targets that are spread out. Kisaragi's actually not very good about that. I think Yakushichi might be. Flare torpedo and multi-locking missiles. Those are the things that, and interceptors. Yeah, she'd be a great pick. Yeah, the only thing is that um, Kisaragi is the lowest level character. We could choose to have her... Oh, and so you know what? Super large missile would be actually be really good for her. I'm going to bring her even though she's not the perfect okay, person because I want her to be leveled up. So, now I'm going to do something that I've been thinking about doing for a while and then always forget to do. I'm going to bring these people back in in order so that they're ordered correctly, you know, G1s first and so forth. So, 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 12. I'll fight. We have to fight. Understood. No problem. Okay. Right. Now, hopefully that's going to be the order in which they're listed on the screen. I feel like that'll just make it easier for me to tell who's in what position. I've never thought to do that. And before we go, Kisaragi would really benefit from having some upgrades, I think, to her long-range missiles. But do I also want to do everybody's Neuralinks? Because... <sighs> We can work around the Neuralink thing by replaying old missions, but I kind of just don't want to. I don't want to have to do that. Uh, Moo wants a game with flare torpedoes, F-L-A-I-R. -A -A I would also like that. Like, big, colorful, 
multicolored like um uh like like fireworks and stuff that'd be great i would love to have that uh moo i hope you're having a great monday um okay i'm thinking about how we want to do this i'm going to upgrade her Yeah, her main battery railgun is not very good. Uh, but we are bringing in Goto, and Goto has gravity missiles that can drag everybody in together. So... Oh gosh, I don't know. We're not going to upgrade him at all, I don't think. Let me do, do his generator another time. I do have nine points into it. Sure, let's upgrade his generator again. And... Yeah, I'm gonna think about him. Uh, let's do... So, Karabe is the lowest level guy, I think, maybe in the entire squad. Uh, so, what do we want to do with him? Well, multi-rocket launchers would be a great pick for this specific mission, as would anti-ground piercing rocket launchers. So, I think I'm gonna upgrade both of those together. Let's do the multi-rocket launchers and the anti-ground piercing rocket launcher. We'll actually do that one twice. And then the Plasma Arc Fusion Cutter is a close-in weapon. I'm going to upgrade his sentry gun as well. Although I will say, you know what's really been uh, working well? We've already upgraded Guardian. Would Guardian be helpful here as opposed to sentry gun? Probably not. Let's do sentry gun a couple times. We'll upgrade that. And then... Oh, lots of G3s on this mission, but I think that's going to serve us well. His anti-air bombardment may not be the best, but his super large missile is going to be. And I'm gonna say that anybody with a super large missile, let's upgrade the generator on them. I think Tomi Kisaragi also has, yeah, let's get her generator up a couple times. Uh, maybe three times since I already jammed the button. All right, and I've only got 2000 points left. Let's do well, let's do the uh, long-range missiles, because we know that's going to come into use here. All right, and let's jump in. Moo says, how are you doing? Uh, doing fine. Uh, it was a very productive day. Uh, got a lot done. Got a lot set up to do. Oh, and Moo? Moo and Carolina, you are the first people here, so I get to share it with you. It's a three-day weekend coming up. And I had no idea. Do you know how great it is to be like, there's four days left in the week and then you get a three day weekend that you weren't even knowing about or anticipating? I'm so happy. I'm so excited about it. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, deploy. Hello to Groompy, and uh, before we go, before we go, uh, before it starts, I also wanted to, and this might come up when we do a story beat, I want to completely cop to the fact that I, uh, I got completely hoodwinked by something that was right in our faces the whole game, and that's the fact that, um, in the last episode, I was talking about, wait a second, um, Okino's not a Sentinel pilot. Okino's not a playable character. We've never seen him at the helm of a Sentinel. And then when we did one of the missions, 
Uh, and I, I think it was actually at the end of Hijiyama's story. Then, like, it does show Okino. I was like, wait a second, we have seen this. I never picked up on the fact that we've seen Okino shown as the others are, as being, like, naked and at the helm of a sentinel. And it just never occurred to me he's not one of the sentinel pilots he's not one of the playable characters so it was one of those cases where the truth of it or a truth was staring me right in the face that there was this massive discrepancy that we've seen okino like as though he's at the helm of a sentinel but he's never he never actually is and I'd have to go back and like watch the story again to see the points at which that occurs. But every once in a while, you'll be talking to somebody like, oh, I saw that coming. I knew that happened. And they just didn't bring it up. And I try to be careful about that. So I like sharing like, nope, I never saw it coming. I, I was completely hoodwinked by that. It was staring me right in the face throughout much of the game. And I just didn't see it. Um, also, Moose went through like 2,000 photos. My goodness. I'm... I'm I'm relieved for you that that's done, and hopefully it is all in order in the way that it should. And Mia, thank you very, very much for the shout out. Also, apparently I ruined the uh, three-day weekend for Grumpy, who didn't know that it was Stay coming, and now, now would have Stay been pleasantly surprised on the Friday. I'll tell you this, though. Oh, and by the way, they are not remotely in the order that I put them, so I guess maybe this is just entirely what random. Next? What's our plan? Okay, so, uh, do I have a G4? Yes, I do. Can I have my G4 drop a flare torpedo right here? Probably, but let me just take a quick look to make sure of the range. Yeah, I have to be much closer. So, let's move up quite a bit. Let's get our G1. Because they're moving any other direction, we don't know where that's going to be. So we're going to get uh, get him right around here. And as this circle closes, that's where we're going to want to put down the, um, uh, like, launch our interceptors and stuff like that. So let's let everybody move for a second. Oh, gotta think. Oh, now we've got uh, multiple targets. Okay, that's fine. Yep. So this is around the time that I want to launch all that stuff so that my characters have recharged around the time that they come down. So let's get a sentry gun. And we've got two groups of guys coming up here. So let me try to get a sentry gun here-ish in the hopes that it can fire sort of across both of them. Moon takes a stupid fast. number of photos at an event. Uh, three hours for a kids-only obstacle course. Uh, and I ran more than they did, I swear. Yeah, but it is, that's one of the first things that you sort of learn this as a photographer, isn't it? Like, just keep shooting. Always be shooting, because that way you never miss it. It's better to sort through after the fact than to miss that one and only critical moment. Um, mean battery heavy railgun would be very, very helpful if I was in the right position, or EMP stunner would be great. Oh, actually, she's going to be able to hit everybody, yeah, from right where she is. So we'll just have her hang back. And super large missile I don't want to fire just yet. And I really thought that I brought somebody with interceptors. Backup deployed. What next? All right, um... Let's actually move Let's her a little bit away because so many of her attacks are long range. Uh, let's just move her right here. All right, do we have uh, contact yet? Not yet. I guess I can do this. Unbelievable. I'm acting like an amateur. Oh, let me move him a little bit outside because we want to have uh, a little space Number to approach. 12, moving out. Gotta keep my okay. Up. There we go. Big swarm. Now, um, and another another swarm that's about to happen in there. So, what's our plan? What well, Stay calm. What? Oh, enemy on the let's see. Let's do. Some of these guys are flying, but not all. So the anti-air defensive flares isn't that great. Demolisher blade should be a good party for these guys, I would think. Right. Enemy down! 
Okay, I didn't hit any of the flying guys, but that's fine. So, main battery railgun would fire right through many of these guys. Yeah. Let's do this. Kind of they felt that. Did you see that? Gotta get so much better than you. I want to make sure that we're not firing everything at these guys. Uh, we've done a very good job, and our interceptors are on the case. EMP center, I definitely want to wait until everybody's down. We could do multi-launching. Yeah, the cooldown on this isn't that high. Hit. I beat him. What's our plan? Yeah, and wow. Yep, we're going to see a big party coming in here in just a second. Um, is there any other defensive thing that I can Enemy on the move. throw up? I don't think that there is. Yeah, let's save his action until we go. Groovy has ever seen a cow in a mud run. Don't think so. Where are they? Okay, lots of guys. If Goto is the no, I, I really want to do a gravity missile to drag them all into one location and then wallop them with a really big hit. But let's do. Oh, you know what? Super large missile. Look at how large the missile is. How large is it? It's super large. Now. <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> oh, there's only two of them left. Um, that long weekend, is that the end of this week or the beginning of next? It is the beginning of next. Uh, for us, it'll be next Monday that is off. And that is uh, a kind of important programming note because it means that we'll be able to do uh, hopefully an earlier and more elaborate stream on next Monday. Okay, um, action. So, we could flare torpedo these guys, or these guys, and I like this because there's gonna be additional guys coming down in this area. Also, what's happening over here? Oh, look, look what's about to happen right here. Still, why not hit the guys that are currently on the field? Um, the only thing is that if we could do a gravity missile that would hit enough of them, yeah, not, not really, it doesn't feel like. Like, why drag them all together when I also have the capacity to just melt them? Or, or, by the way, just shield matrix everybody. Yeah, let's just shield matrix everybody for a second, because we may not be able to lay down enough incoming fire to stop all of this. Shields up. Oh, thanks. Let's see. Okay, can I do an EMP attractor on these guys? Not from where I am. Uh, leap attack, anti-air, anti-air defensive flares might be really good against this crew that's coming in right on top of him. So, let's just get into a slightly different position. Now that's, that's a source that you'd want to do a big gravity, uh, bomb on, I'd say. Let's hit these guys with a big anti-ground piercing rocket launch. <laughs> So I'm just taking a quick look at this missile that's flying out. Um, what next? What next? What next is... Whoops. Nope. Let's the do action. Anti-air defensive flares. And immediately after this, I'm going to do the EMP launch. Anti-air defense. Gonna be okay. Oh, wait. Can maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. All right. We got a lot of business happening over here. Our defense is still at 100%. We do see this coming in. Boy, if I could delay her strike for just a heartbeat until this comes in, then what we're going to do is uh, EMP stunner. So, but it's, it's really just going to be like a fraction of a second. Okay. Yep. There we go. That's exactly where I wanted it. Action. EMP stunner. That's going to hit everybody in this radius, knock them out of the sky, stop them from moving, destroy any incoming uh, missiles. Okay. Now, it didn't hit everybody over here, so... Um, she also has EMP stunner and homing missile and super large missile. Well, I mean, super large missile is it's just really good. You guys, it's just really good. Go. 
Uh, Moose says, my extended family still doesn't understand why no other country really celebrates what I l prefer to think of as indigenous, uh, in in indigenous people say. Really? Where? Okay. It's an interesting thing to be confused by. Um, I... Okay, I don't want to get dragged off on that, but I, uh... Sorry, that... <laughs> That was just difficult for me to process. It's a little bit like, why don't other countries celebrate Independence Day or Thanksgiving? It's because they are other countries with other customs. Okay, um... EMP Attractor. Hmm. EMP Attractor. So, with his ablative armor, or ceramic armor, whatever it's called, I'm not even sure that these guys can hurt him. So... Doing EMP Attractor to them would be great, except for the fact that he's not going to hit all that many of them. Then again, none of these guys were privy to the EMP that I just fired out, so anything to sort of, like, disrupt their ability to move seems like a pretty good time. Alternatively, Leap Attack? You know what? Leap Attack. How's that? Yes! Okay. All right. Uh, rocket Launchers? Yeah, a bunch of these guys, again, didn't get hit and are prepping to fire. We've got shields, but let's not fuck around with it. Alright, um, I think our little gravity missile trick would be, uh, yeah, let's do gravity missiles, because what it's going to do is basically drag everybody into some of these anti-air defensive flares. I'll stop them. Oh, they actually got super murdered there. Okay. Well, in that case, let's do some... Well, Missile Rain is literally made for this, isn't it? Other practice rounds over. All right. Uh, EMP attractor now. See, see, now we've got sort of a broader panoply of guys over in this direction. You're just small, right? Now they will feel compelled to attack him, but also, again, thanks to his armor, I'm not sure they're going to take a lot of damage. Oh, there's so many. Okay, don't get overwhelmed. This is fine. Uh, Goto. Another... So if I do another gravity missile, the trouble with gravity missiles is that it doesn't do any damage, so he's, he's going to get shut down. What I would rather do is... We might want to do another shield matrix, but that is insufficient because there's so many of them and they're so close. So instead, let's lay down a... So this is not going to detonate where you see it. It is going to detonate against the first guy that it hits, which is going to be much closer to the terminal, and that's good for us. Yeah, now everybody's going to have to go through this, and I don't think they're going to be able to survive the distance to the flare torpedo. That said, yeah, his positioning isn't great. We could EMP a tractor across these guys. Yeah, you know what? But let's... No, I'm going to hit all of them because the ones that are inside the flare torpedo will still have to come in this direction, and it's going to stop their progress for at least a moment. You're just small, right? Yes! Uh, maybe saying my family is kind of ignorant, uh, who literally cannot wrap their minds around other countries not celebrating U.S. holidays. Sadly, they may be in the minority of Americans, uh, but not much, by much. Well, you know, sometimes the best we can do is try to share the correct information. Like, you know, tr try to at least provide them some correct information and hope that it gets through. Let, let me say this, because I do like to... I don't like pointing this out, but I feel like there's value in pointing this out. I have, in my past, believed breathtakingly stupid things, and it was through a lot of patience by people smarter and wiser than myself to just be like, you know, okay, um, well, hopefully you think better of it someday. And eventually I got tired of being embarrassed by my, my own ignorance and decided that I wanted to learn... Uh, more about the world. Okay, we do have incoming missiles. I am thinking about doing another, or actually my first global EMP. It's going to knock those missiles out. 
Um, Anti-air bombardment is going to hit a couple of those missiles, but not very many of them. Uh, super large missile is going to take out a lot of the dudes, but not the incoming missiles. Um, also, like super large missile, it feels like a lot of its uh, impact area is going to be. Well, this is going to hit both of those missiles, though. Yeah. Leave it to me. I think I'm going to do the EMP right after this, though. I gotta think. Uh, wait, wait. Breaking news. Do we have something more that we can do here? And lay down another sentry gun wouldn't be a bad idea. I know the sentry gun is sort of a, like, a line attack, but still, it's a line that cuts through a lot of individual targets. Um... I'm feeling like multi-rocket missiles. Like, let's keep it simple. I'm on it. How's that? They're down. Gonna be okay. Okay, hold on a second. I keep my spirit. Action. EMP stunner. Yes. This is exactly what I was hoping to have happen because look at the... So this white circle. See the white circle that I'm sort of tracing along? That's going to hit every missile. Not, not that missile over there, but every flying guy, every missile incoming... Yeah, it's going to shut down that firing arc that's coming in. Yeah. Hold up. Take down any missiles, or sorry, shields that the enemies might have oh, going on. Oh, I can do this. Okay, that missile is coming in right now. So I need to choose how I feel about that. Let's do this. Okay, stop. Yeah, so we're going to use the uh, phase plasma EMP. That'll knock out any missiles that I've missed. Because I really thought there was one coming in and I could be wrong. Yeah, this will hit everybody. What next? Okay, these guys are all knocked down, which is good. Let's do... Can I do a Demolisher Blade on them? Am I close enough? No, not yet. Also, this RPF, uh, I do very much want to hit with my Demolisher Blade. And since it's on the ground, I don't know if it normally flies, but it's not going to fly very much after this. Can I launch some additional interceptors? I cannot. Uh, and want some more flare torpedoes on these guys. That'd be pretty good. Yeah, guys, we are we're doing okay here. I gotta say. Um. Yeah, I feel like flare torpedoes are best bet here. That easy. Let's go, Yeah, sentry gun, I think. I like sentry gun because the enemies also like to attack the sentry guns, and I don't care if they get destroyed. I'm acting like an amateur. Alright, for now, we're going to be moving back up over here. Good. Let's turn this around. Now, she's actually a little bit too close to fire off some of her best stuff, but not too close for heavy battery railgun, which is also going to nail that shield generator guy. Yeah. Also, Moo is saying that her uh, extended family has not shot her uh, foreigner husband. Grumpy is from France. Uh, but that might be because he doesn't go to fa family gatherings anymore. Well, based on your description, I I can't blame him. It doesn't sound like he would uh, enjoy it all that much. Uh, Demolisher Blade? Can I do this yet? Nope, not quite. Might, do, might be able to do Rush Attack. Yeah. Here it comes. Oh, I really thought he would get it. I was about to be so happy. Okay, that's good. And not quite close enough to do anything about that. Let's just move a little bit closer. I think this is the end of the fight, you guys. We just gotta take that guy out. What's optimal? 
number 22. Let just stay on guard. I'm in range. Good. Formation of enemy signals confirmed. Other than the fiction of the, the game, that entire thing was 30 seconds. Aegis activated. Terminal closure complete. Surrounding two kilometer area now fully secure. Ending technical analysis. Oh, and hello to blah blah blah. Now we just gotta slam the Aegis down on the others, right? Unfortunately, it's not so simple. If we activate Aegis on all the terminals, time as we know it will stop in this world. We'll stop time? You gotta be shitting me! Our link to universal control would be completely cut off. Everyone but us will disappear. They'll never come back. And that's not all. We'd be completely isolated. Trapped in a dead world. Just us and the ruined city. Until the day we die. <sighs> so this Aegis isn't gonna save our asses after all. So that's Operation Aegis. Even then, I guess she thought it'd be better than being annihilated. If Morimura believed the Sentinel Project was a lost cause, this must have seemed like her only option. See, I don't buy I that. We did it. I don't... That doesn't make sense to me. It's just a different form of annihilation. So, this is definitely an S rank, by the way. Um, also, Grumpy is saying that President Pullman was the one who made the 4th of July an international holiday when Will Smith killed the aliens. Uh, I feel like we're giving insufficient credit to Jeff Goldblum. He was also involved there. But yes, on the whole. And I, it, he, Jeff Goldblum is in that movie, right? I know that Brent Spiner's in that movie, but... Now I'm very worried that he's not in that movie because I'm trying to think of one single thing that Jeff Goldblum does in... No, you guys, I'm, I'm really having a crisis here. Jeff Goldblum is in Independence Day, right? What the fuck? I, like, in my head he is, and I cannot remember a single thing. Judd Hirsch is in the movie. Bill Pullman's in the movie. Will Smith is in the movie. Um, Randy Quaid is in the movie. He helps us. well, I don't want to give away the movie. Okay, thank you, Groomfy. Yes, no, I, I am completely blanking on anything that Jeff Goldblum says or does in the entire movie. <laughs> oh my god. He's Will, with Will Smith when delivering the virus. Okay, did he say something? <laughs> did he, did, like, did he... Wow, it has apparently been too long since I've watched Independence Day. Uh, we will not participate to the uh, um, advance. What we're going to do now is go to the... Oh. No, let's do, let's do the analysis later. Let's do another Goto story. Hmm. Oh, I should have read the little paragraph. It's just a recap of what we saw most recently. This data is... Is that you, Goto? It's been a while. The last time I saw you was two months before my death. Roughly a year ago, I think. Chairman Ogata? An AI construct based on Chairman Kendo Ogata? Why would this be in Morimura's files? I see. So this is how she managed to raise all those funds. She must have used this AI to access the Shikishima Chairman's hidden network. Not quite. I'm afraid that was originally my idea. The good Professor Morimura was only following my orders. So all of this was by design? Your design? Leaking the prototype nanomachinery to the black market? The catastrophic consequences? You're the one who exploited her. If you blame anyone, blame yourself. We were so close to losing Project Ark entirely. Now we must prioritize the project above all else. 
I'll finally have my second chance at life. You were planning on downloading yourself into a clone. A brave new Earth is waiting for me. I won't let you do this. What is Professor Morimura doing now? She's dead. By that hitman's hands, I presume. That's humanity. Self-destructive to the very end. Only a few survivors left now. I give them three days at most. My deepest condolences for your imminent death. Shut up, Construct. Your project is over. Unfortunately for you, the Ark has already set off. It's still within Khan's range. You don't have clearance. I refuse to let an AI control the future of humanity. Out of the survivors, the ones who would have clearance. So, suppose I am the professor. Then what? I want to know the truth. I want to know the reasons behind all of this. But that seems unlikely. I imagine you're not inclined to tell me anything. And why's that? It'd be inconvenient for you if we had all the facts. Considering you're trying to eliminate us. <sighs> From the very beginning, you never intended for this world to survive. An interesting discussion to have at some point, not right now, is who is the least bad guy <laughs> in the story of 13 Sentinels? Like, among the protagonists, I feel like we have some genuinely good people who are broadly interested in trying to do right by people. But in terms of the backstory, the 2188 crew, like... I mean, I mean, obviously Juro's okay, and there's some others, but like, boy, there's a lot of like complicated relationships way back then in the year 2188, where um, people did horrifically awful things, also turned around and tried to do right things. It's it's a complicated political landscape there. You think I'm trying to destroy the world? I do. So you think I'm enabling the Kaiju now? Even though I've got more reason to hate them than any of you? That is true, at least. You're clearly not on the Kaiju's side. After all, they are a threat to your primary objective. Which would be to carry out the plan you formed in 2188. However, that plan may now be untenable. The situation has deviated too drastically. <sighs> Recall when I brought you to the underground UFO. I believe you said something like... It was out of your hands. Okay. No, hold on. If Operation Aegis succeeds, a world reset will no longer be possible. This operation goes against Professor Morimura's agenda. She will stop at nothing to prevent it. Well, but there's another issue there from what we've learned elsewhere. And, and, and uh, Goto may not know this and Professor Morimura might not know this, but according to uh, the other, like the adult Chihiro Morimura, there are no more resets possible. This is it. This is the last time around for any of them. So... Operation Aegis is basically putting a stop to something that can't happen anyway, uh, as sort of a Hail Mary pass that there's going to be something else possible. The thing is, I don't think that adult Chihiro is given to random, like, like just tossing a dart in the dark. Like, it seems to me like she, she must have had some other plan. I just don't know what it is yet. This refers to the humans who can control the UFO's mainframe. Those compatible have nanomachines implanted in their bodies. Three months prior to the Newman Inc. incident, Newman was acquired by the conglomerate Shikishima. With these inner 
Apparently some kind of nanomachine information technology. They've become one of the world's top megacorps. of the UFO? Yes. Honestly, Okino-kun, you can't take anything else in life seriously. So why do you put so much time into all this? <sighs> Okino. Just talking to myself. More importantly, look at this mess. Something unpleasant must have happened here. Most likely. Shikishima Android. Probably left here by Ida-san. I really feel like I'd want to, like, pull the power cores out of these things. Like, rip the spine right out of the lower half so it can't get up and walk around. They've all been shot. External damage suggests the weapon was a phaser. out of commission. Too damaged to function. I see. Let's get started then. Is it really possible? I have a fairly comprehensive grasp of this system. This abnormality all comes down to the decode, right? I should be able to get rid of it. Why would Miss Morimura push for Operation Aegis if this was an option all along? Well, you said it yourself. She's either being controlled by someone, or she could be trying to save herself. That's not right. Hold on. That file system hadn't even been analyzed yet. How did you gain access? I have a senior admin ID. Access privileges for the entire system. You somehow got access to an account that high level? Yes. I have my ways. I'm assuming that this, uh, the, the timeline for Goto's story is particularly asynchronous, but I think that this is before he worked out that she's Professor Morimura from 2188, not um, Ms. Morimura, adult Iori Fu Fuyusaka. This is no good. Sector 3's mainframe has been damaged in an attack. It's barely operational. I won't be able to process much here. Well, not much choice. I'll have to send direct instructions to the command ship. Command ship? The mothership in orbit. It can send commands directly to the UFO. Is it? An arc? Some grand design from the people of the future? Either that or a base of operations for an alien invasion. And hello to Azric. Azric, I hope you had a nice Monday. The comms channel to the command ship is cut off. Must be hiding somewhere beyond the horizon. Looks like about 35 minutes until the comms reconnect. But we don't have that long. Time to find another link. Will this fix cut off the Kaiju's attacks? It should be able to solve the problem at its core. However... We can't stop any commands that were already processed. That's out of my hands. Which means... We'll still have to deal with the kaiju already generated. We don't know how many the factories have produced. If we could just verify their numbers... Hmm. We're going to need the Sentinels after all. That may be best. Operation Aegis is too much of a risk. In other words, the decode's activation is a blow you cannot recover from. No matter how you try to fix it, your plan is irreversibly impacted. The most direct fix would be eliminating the decode. Then, you would just restart the loop anew. In 
order to trigger a loop, you need them to destroy all the sector's mainframes. And therein lies your goal. You want this world destroyed so the timeline can be reset. <laughs> but you have one major obstacle, and that's Operation Aegis. It may, we also have to consider the possibility that the whole idea that the world can't be reset is incorrect information. I don't think it is, because otherwise, what are the stakes of the story? But um, it is possible that this is false information. I don't know who would have spread this lie for that purpose, but it's worth considering. Because you would think that of all people, Professor Morimura would know whether or not the system is capable of being reset again, but I don't know. I'm looking at it and saying there must be so much damage and degradation over how many hundreds of years this whole thing has been running. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me that it's still going. If Operation Aegis succeeds, a world reset will no longer be possible. This operation goes against Prof... She will stop at nothing. Yeah, okay, we already heard that. Aegis isn't just an ordinary defense system. It causes a terminal to seal itself off in self-defense, preventing anyone from using it to control the world. Once all the terminals are sealed off, we'll be severed from the mainframe, effectively preventing any further loop or extinction. <sighs> but if that happens, your plan is null and void. We'd be stuck in a loop where your goal was impossible. Hi, then. Let's say all your wild speculation is correct. What do you plan to do about it? Let's backtrack a little bit. We discussed the suspect of Miss Morimura's murder. And you asked me who I think did it. But he's really got like a Detective Inspector Jenks thing of just like summing up every part of the mystery that he's been like, let's really go through this one incremental step at a time. If you actually are Professor Chihiro Morimura, then I believe you personally murdered Miss Morimura. Did I now? She was a staunch advocate of Operation Aegis. A thorn in your side, someone in the way of your reset. An interesting theory, if also an incorrect one. Believe me, I understand why you'd view me with hostility. Certainly Renya Goto was responsible for chasing you out of Newman. Even if it was on Shikishima's behalf. A buyer simply eliminating liabilities. After that, you took the lead on Project Ark. Under Kengo Ogata's oversight. Oh, whoops, whoops. Uh... Kengo Ogata, of course, being Nenji Ogata's father. And Shikishima's chairman, who recognized your talent. He passed away in 2187. His age caught up with him. But the other Kengo Ogata is perhaps more relevant. The one you created after his death using his memories. An AI construct. You were letting it control you. I was just getting advice. Uh, hello to Ronan, who says, I see we are 49 minutes into this 14-hour stream. Oh, if only we could do that. Uh, we do have a good, solid 90 minutes ahead of us. But, uh, yeah, this will not be the final episode of 13 Sentinels, but we're going to make what progress we can, for sure. Get that out of a log, too? Yes. Renya Goto found that AI. The log was recorded in the colony after your death. Once your clone reaches 18 years of age, you set it so that she'd download your memories. <sighs> it's clear this project was not a selfish endeavor. I'm sure you felt a sense of duty to save humanity. But you were also trying to bring Kengo Ogata back to life. So Professor Morimura takes over Chihiro Morimura's clone. And presumably, Kengo Ogata would take over Nenji Ogata's clone. That's why you're so intent on sticking to the plan. Certainly, from your perspective, Miss Murimura was expendable. 
She had to die. Her very survival endangered your ultimate goal. Well, that is a shame. This isn't ideal, but you know too much. Goodbye. Yo, Goto, you cannot possibly be... He, here's what I'm guessing. When we come back, she's going to pull the trigger and it's not going to go off because he will have been smart enough to... Um, to oh my goodness, hello to Senka! Senka UK, boy, I hope that you had a fantastic summer um, and, yeah, are just doing well in general. Yeah, as Mia says, Senka, how are you? Uh, not bad. Thank you, Mia. Hope you're well and feeling better. Yeah, so Mia and I did get a chance to talk earlier. I'm glad to hear that our talk um, does make her, uh, has made her feel better. Um, but still a little bit under the weather, and I know that she felt very bad about missing the stream yesterday. Moo says, would you be willing to ask your Amazeball producer if she could make a hug command for your channel? I think, uh, Moo, that is a great idea. Um, it's... <laughs> It's one of those things where we tend to, like, in these streams, have great ideas that then... <laughs> it's just so little time. But, Mia, if you could keep on us to make sure that that gets done, I will bring it up and make sure that it gets um, put in, because I think that would be great. I would love to do an exclamation point hug for Mia uh, and Senka. Uh, Senka, I am doing actually just fine today. Today was a really good day, uh, and Senka is saying that summer went pretty good. Thanks. Senka, I've also seen that Toxic has been playing New World. I'm curious if you're going to play that yourself. It'd be fun to see you uh, in those streams uh, with him. And also, are you at all concerned about the what appears to be the potential to cause a little bit of video card damage? I watched a video about this, and apparently New World has some aggressive address calls or whatever. I, I don't I don't know video cards, but the people that do say that New World might have some. Uh, some stuff going on so wow look at this protagonist with story progress at a hundred percent or over 12. You, you like the next thing we're gonna do with him you can only do after you have finished every other person's story wow uh, but before we do that, let's go over to analysis. Oh, and Senka, you are joining us in episode 23 of this. Just to let you know, I'm not sure that it would be all that much more uh, comprehensible if you we were in episode two. This is a very, very elaborate and complicated story. And, and I will fess up to chat. I'm putting together like 10% of what Goto and Chihiro are talking about with uh, Kengo Ogata, like, yeah, okay, so that's Nenji Ogata's father. Okay. Are these guys just playing at immortality? Is that their whole thing? They just want to live forever and rule over, like, a largely dead fictional world? I, 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 I'm not sure that I understand certain parts of this yet, but let's go. So first, we're going to see what all has been updated. So here's Chihiro. When the 2188 Professor Chihiro Morimura's memories were restored to Chihiro, she witnesses the destruction caused by the Kaiju invasion and the extent of the situation's deviation from her original plan for Project Arc. Chihiro decides that for her plan to succeed, she'll need a fresh start for, with a new world, devoid of all these problems and variables. Although they are both Chihiro Morimura, Morimura and her efforts to enable Project Aegis were obstacles to the original plan, so Chihiro kills her. Again, I'm trying to work out whether or not there can ever be a loop again. Uh, regular Chihiro Morimura clearly believed there could not. Professor Morimura appears to believe differently. Although, although, wait, maybe, maybe that's what we're learning here. That a loop can still happen, but Professor Morimura intends to reset everything to zero. That's why nothing's going to be saved again in Sector Zero because she wants an absolutely blank slate to work from. So another loop is possible, but not for any of the characters. No one survives this one. That could be it. <laughs> Misanka says, I hear everything Mia types in her loud voice. <laughs> uh, Carol Luna says of um, New World, Supposedly, uh, almost all, uh, mostly top models of GPUs are affected. Some say it is related to power delivery on the card. I can say this. If I were to 
attempt to play New World, which I don't intend to do, uh, and we don't have necessarily one of the cards that is most likely to be affected, but I would probably make certain that it was limited to 60 frames per second or, or 120, but it would have a hard frame rate limit. I, I would recommend this because I don't know what I'm talking about and no one should ever listen to me about things like this. Um, you know, do, do a YouTube search, do some Google searches. Apparently, New World is having a, a deleterious effect on certain video cards, and I would recommend that anybody playing to play at least is aware of it. Father of the 2188 Nenji Ogata, as well as the chairman of the Shikishima group, Kengo Ogata died in 2187, but he left behind a simulated AI construct of his personality. He is responsible for manipulating Professor Morimura and pressing Project Arc forward, planning to revive himself through the use of the interlocutor and cloning technology on the New Earth. I mean, I guess, yeah, you'd want to be alive, but all of this, all of this is so that that one dude can be alive? It's just very... Also... During the last scene that we saw, I'm just wondering at what point somebody gives up. It just talks like this all the time. Hello, CEO. I'm back. I'm now an AI construct and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, at that point, you're just advertising that you're evil, right? And hello to Patekin. Uh, imagine waiting this long to get a new card, and then it's melted by a new game. Yeah, one of the videos that I watched on this very topic was that very, um, what was about that. Like, it started off with, like, hey, you can't get a replacement video card. Like, be aware of this, because it may not happen, but if it does... Okay, Chihiro used her senior admin ID in the UFO's mainstream to stop the automated factory from pr producing kaiju. Uh, another thing here, the senior admin ID, access to the UFO's mainframe. I can't remember if we talked about this in the last episode, but that's what it means to be compatible. You're a real person. That's what it is. And when, uh, like, we were like, what is compatible? What is compatible relative to, like, having nanomachines? There's only, like, 15 real people, it, like, that exist is one of the things that we found out last time. So that's what it means to be compatible. You're not a pretend person that is the product of the interlocutor or, or universal control or whatever you want to call it. Interceptors, fourth generation Sentinel support equipment, releases four, well, a lot more for us, high mobility attack drones that automatically target and attack Kaiju. After the Hunter's high-speed assault against the terminals proved so effective, Tsukasa Okino built these weapons after thoroughly analyzing their flight mechanism. And yes, we're going to spend some of these. Okay, artificial satellite, also called the command ship or mother ship in orbit. Chihiro accesses this ship, access the ship to stop the automated factory's mass production of Dimos. EXT. Oh, really? Well, hold on, everybody. Look at that. Look at that poster. That's a uh, EXT, is it? A sci-fi movie released in 1982, a touching story about an alien that got stranded on Earth connecting with a young boy. It's famous for the scene where the boy takes flight as he rides his unicycle, the sun setting in the background. Natsuno Minami is such a huge fan of the movie that she watched it three times in theaters and countless times on TV broadcasts and video. Minami claims that one can't talk about aliens without seeing that movie. They sure can't. Also, I, I didn't notice that it's a unicycle before. <laughs> it's very stupid. <laughs> uh, and Mia, thank you very much for the for the clip. Oh, his unicycle. Okay. It's technically different. Different enough. Okay, so I saw Nightmare in there. We're going to spend one of our mystery points on Nightmare, which I believe is Juro Karabe's Nightmare about murdering everybody. Here we go. The dream Juro Karabe sees of him killing everyone. Seeing this dream makes Karabe anxious that he might end up killing Megumi Yakushichi, so he starts to avoid her. In his dream, the man called Juro Izumi, who resembles, resembles Karabe, claims that the nanomachines in their bodies are what's calling the Daimos here. Towards the end of the dream, Izumi gets shot by a woman who looks just like Iori Fuyasaka. 
During this time, 426 believed the only way to escape from this eternal loop was to kill all the compatible ones. However, 426 later discovers another escape method that utilizes the mechanics of the Dymo simulation game. Well, that does clarify a little bit about why 426 stopped trying to murder everybody and came up with new information. My next question then is, did 426 ever realize that like killing the ones carrying the code is counterproductive because they're the only humans that actually exist? Because I don't feel like he has access to that information. All right, the three laws. And pending further information, I believe these are the three laws of robotics, uh, which I'm not going to pretend that I'm going to remember. Uh, like, let, let me just do my best just in case it is correct. Number one, uh, an android must never kill or harm a human being or through inaction allow the human being to come to harm. Number two, fucking something. Number three, the android, to number two is profit. Number three is the android should act to self-preserve itself unless it is in conflict with the first two laws. Like, like the android should try to stay alive and intact or through, or, 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 and through inaction not, you know, not allow itself to come to harm unless it is in violation of the first two laws. I do not remember the second law. One, don't murder humans. Three, don't hurt yourself, I think. But I don't remember what the second one is. It could be lie to humans, be dishonest. I don't remember. Three laws written by a famous author, a, a famous author. Why don't you just say it, it was, it was uh, Isaac Asimov, wasn't it? Asimov's three laws of robotics. I'm going to feel bad if it was Ar um, uh, Clark. But it was Asimov, right? Three laws written by a famous author, well known for his science fiction piece from the 20th century, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Oh shit, Asimov didn't write A Space Odyssey, did he? Anyway, when a distinguished but elderly scientist states that something is possible. Oh, this is all fake. Oh, it's very fake. Oh, but they're not the three laws of robotics. I'm going to stop talking about the wrong things and we're going to talk about what is on the screen. When a distinguished but elderly scientist states that something is possible, he is almost certainly right. When he states that something is impossible, he is very probably wrong. Number two, the only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture a little way past them into the impossible. Number three, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yeah, so they're not the three laws of robotics. That is, um, is it Arthur C. Clarke? I'm worried about that. Carol Luna uh, shared this on Discord earlier. So earlier today, I watched a prom somewhat local streamer streaming from his phone while he had some other people he and some other people were walking around in a building that was previously a mental uh, hospital looking for ghosts. Could have been a lot more interesting if they weren't so noisy and had so much fun trying to scare each other. Oh well. I would posted the link if it weren't because they were talking Norwegian. Guess most people here won't understand them. Yeah, my uh, friends and I went through a brief period growing up where, like, we wanted to like go looking for ghosts and stuff like that and go to the graveyard at night. And we had a very, very hard, hard rule. No trying to scare each other. Like, just don't do that as cheap jump scares. Like, so we never did the trying to scare each other thing, but we did some uh, urban exploration of places that we weren't supposed to be. And I don't know, nothing particularly dilapidated or anything. Let's read about the second graders magazine. Nenji Ogata's most treasured item when he was in elementary school, a grade-based educational magazine that was released in 1976. The free gifts attached to this were the multiplication train and the flexi-disc version of Terror of Mechadimos. That might have been also where he uh, became very uh, enamored of the League of Shadows or whatever it is. All right, let's do another battle. Because by the way, I think our next uh, what's-his-face thing is the last one, the last story beat. Or the last, um, chapter of the 13 protagonists. Okay. Um, we technically have six people that we can bring with us, but we want to have Karabe and Yakushiji on the team, and we cannot bring Karabe. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do an earlier mission. We're going to blitz through it as quickly as we possibly can so that we can bring some of these people off of Overload. Yeah. Okay. Let's go do that. Now, before I do this, because I'm worried about, um... 
screwing something up in a really embarrassing way. Let's lay down a quick save. And let's go in here. And we're going to do, like, episode one of whatever. And we're just going to bring in one... No, it won't. Hold on. I don't want to do the tutorial then. All right, so let's do this one. And so what, what kind of thing are we looking at? City defense, uh, time of clearing 50% or higher. Many ground kaiju will appear. I'm going to tell you what. Let's bring in Amaguchi. I want to see if we can solo this. Because, I mean, he's super more powerful than anything that ever happened before. And the only uh, objective is, you know, we should be able to do this, right? Uh, so let's go in and check him out. Do we want to load any upgrades on him? Uh, we can upgrade his pulse lasers, his flare torpedo. Yeah, let's upgrade his flare torpedo a couple times. Let's upgrade his... I actually really seem to like his floating mine a bunch in that last mission that we had. Shield Matrix is not going to be very useful for him if he's out there on his own. Uh, interceptors. Interceptors will be extremely useful. That is expensive to unlock for him if I don't intend to use them moving on. But... Yeah, you know what? Let's... You know, shield repair is really not useful for him here. So let's unlock interceptors. Let's put interceptors in place of shield repair. And let's upgrade interceptors multiple times. All right. Um, and now, let's see if we want to do any upgrades for him or really anybody. Um, I'm not sure that I do want to do any upgrades on him. He's not my favorite dude. Let's see, would we want to do any upgrades for anybody else? Um, Takamiya. We can upgrade her armor some more. Um, you know what? Let's puzzle over that later. I'll figure it out. Let's see if we can uh, get through that. I want to let the story be played because it's been weeks and weeks and weeks since we've seen that one. This is the very first one. All right, and Man, let's get up. some interceptors out there. Your turn. How's this? We should probably get out of here. Are we from above? Winning? Okay. Um, yep, so we've got another one coming down over here, but... Let's see if we can maybe... Oops, no. Hope I can pull my weight. Uh, let's do Flare Torpedo on these guys. My treat. Like, his Flare Torpedo is so upgraded, it Nailed should it. do Bullseye. a real number on him. Nice. Uh, Multi-locking missiles on these guys. Here goes. I gotta say, it's a little bit nerve-wracking given how much time I can't do anything because there's just the one guy. Uh, let's go to... Find another flare torpedo on top of this. Alright, now, he is largely out of juice, but that's specifically why I kept his, um, 
Free attack going. Nice. Available for us. Waiting for him to recharge. Let's move him over here. Now we do have some incoming missiles, so I wanna Yeah, fortunately we've got some defenses going on too. Uh hit this. I wanna read uh Patigan. Patigan's saying so I've been watching that TV show Squid Game on Netflix is pretty good. Three more episodes to go. A lot of people have been talking about that. Like that's that's really been a, a hot topic of conversation lately, and I didn't, oh, I only just very recently realized it was a, a television show at all. Good timing. Yeah, I see they're messing Better up the city. That's fine. You, you know, it's... All right, flare torpedo them? It's going to stop those missiles from coming out. What now? No, after this, because this is just sort of a, like, get to the end of it so that everybody can recharge, we will be doing one more combat, so I want to uh, advance that. Sank has added Twit Game to the... Oh, hold on, we're gonna get some more story here. characters in this game that if I could talk to in real life, I would most want... I want to know what Ryoko is like. And specifically, game, huh? it's because, like, her whole memory was wiped out, but she still knows certain things, like, about piloting Sentinels and what the kaiju is. Like, what does she remember? What does she know? I'm just... Like, if you had a conversation with her, did she remember growing up like she can probably deduce certain things about the fact that she exists but i'm just uh, I, i'm very curious what her perspective is on anything sanka says i'm still playing catch up like when i was about to start something another new series of something I've, I've been watching pops up yeah no uh me and i would have been like watching a bunch of stuff uh between other events and yeah it's so there's so much cool stuff to see Oh, by the way, uh, I don't know if Mia's next to the keyboard, but they did announce Campaign 3 for Critical Role. Uh, I've not seen Campaigns 1 or 2, but we did get to watch Xandria Unlimited, which was a little mini campaign that they ran, and that was a good time. Okay, so people are at least less memory overloaded, which is nice. So we want to have Karabe and Yakushiji on the team. So we're going to get them. And what else do we know about the combat? Hordes of drum mine and twin tail kaiju up here. Twin tails like to uh, launch rockets, so we're gonna wanna have some flare torpedoes or anti air defensive torpedoes. And the drum mines are gonna try to roll forward and blow up. So things that can knock them away will be very helpful. Let's bring Hijiyama because he's not close to brain overload. And uh, then we're gonna bring at least two of these guys, uh, 27, 27, and 27, so it doesn't really matter who, I will go with, well, it doesn't really matter. Well, it could matter. Let's look at customize, and I want to look at her pilot information. Um, move speed when not piloting. No, no. 
Increases all stats on a stage when already completed with an S rank. That's not going to help us here. Uh, War of the Worlds. Oh, she uh, likes fighting high quads. Well, they're not going to be in this one. And the more kaiju there are, the higher all stats increase. Well, that's nice, but it's not quite as nice as maybe some others. So, um, if Minami attacks after Miura, attack increases. From Minami, I would think. Okay, so Min Minami and uh, Miura get along okay. If Chihiro contacts the team, increases all stats until the end of the next wave. We can't imagine that that's going to happen. Uh, defense increases when AP decreases. No. And attack increases when the total number of combos incre uh, is exceeds 100. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. This is what I was looking for. If Fuyusaka or Yakushiji are on the team, increases all stats. Yakushiji is on the team. Okay, so Kisaragi, you're coming with me. And we're going to bring this guy. This. And, well, really now it's between the two of them. I guess Moving we'll go out. with uh, Miura. Yeah. Okay, so now let's spend some of those points that we just got. I, I don't know on what yet, but we're going to think about that. Anti-air defensive flare seems like it's going to be good if we've got lots of incoming missiles. And... I think we will upgrade his... Well, you know what? You know what? I kind of want to do everybody's Neuralink. I'm not married to it just yet, but we'll see what else we can fit in here. I feel like, yeah, let's upgrade a couple of these things. We're gonna, well, that's 5,000. That one's very expensive. Let's upgrade the sentry gun. Let's upgrade the arm-mounted machine. I've got both the heavy knuckles and arm-mounted machine cannons on him, and I'm kind of feeling like I want to swap one of those out. You know what would be helpful? Guardian. Yeah, let's get Guardian in there in place of the arm-mounted machine cannons, I think. But then again, the machine cannons are so good against um, knocking that out. And the heavy knuckles... Yeah, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put Guardian in place of that, and actually we're gonna put that one right there. Yeah, and then let's upgrade Guardian, and I like Guardian because it's a decoy for the enemies, and I think that'll come in handy here. All right, so for Mira, super large missile is certainly where it's at, but that's very expensive to upgrade. It might be better if we upgraded his generator again, because super large missile is very expensive. So we want to make sure that when it lands and kills people, he gets back as much of that invested cost as possible. Oh, also, uh, Patikin was bringing up Korean movies. I will, again, as I am wont to do, uh, highlight uh, Train to Busan. It doesn't fit very neatly into any of the events for me October, but if you guys have not seen Train to Busan, I do recommend it. Now, one thing we are definitely upgrading is Stun Knuckles. Stun Knuckles absolutely saved our asses in that last battle that we had Mira in. Uh, you know, the one with the drum mine, and yeah, we definitely want to have that in there. Uh, Let's go back and Kisaragi. Kisaragi in is and always has been heavy uh, railgun. Oh, and that's actually uh, maxed out. I didn't realize that you could max out. Okay. Let's do... You know what I would like? I would like her... So when she fires this, she loses... Like, she spends a lot of, ex uh, a lot of um, EP. I would like something that she could do to help her get EP back, and I feel like the multi-launching uh, rapid cannons is a good choice. We'll see how that does. EMP stunner is also a, a, good, a good call as well. It, it, it's not going to give her any points back, but it's going to help out the team. Uh, for Yakushiji, she's really in on the interceptors, isn't she? Yeah, last time that we had her, all she did was sit back and launch interceptors, and it was actually extremely helpful. And then Amaguchi, who just uh, did this, we actually took out his um, sh repair shield, and I want to put that back. The only question is, where did it come from? What did we put on instead? And it might have been 
the... I actually don't remember. Boy, there's nothing on here I don't want to have. Well, I guess we'll do shield repair over shield matrix. Eesh. Maybe we will forego shield repair for right now. Uh, and then last but not least, let's upgrade... Oh, you know you know what else? Sorry, you know what else for uh, Kisaragi? Because she fires so many like high-impact weapons, getting her generator up I think is very important. All right. For Amaguchi, is there anything we want to upgrade? How about his floating mines? All right. Oh, Sanka UK, you have no idea how much we have to watch in uh, on Disney Plus, which basically everything. Operation Aegis. Miss Morimura probably didn't know how tough it would be. If we'd gone through with Morimura's plan without the Sentinels, I can't even imagine where we'd be. Okay, it's always a risk when you go to pause this, but I needed to pause to say hello to Haseo. Haseo, I hope that you're doing awesome. I have been... Uh, we've been lurking in a lot of your Tales of Arise streams. I personally have been working very hard to not see too much, but my producer's really been enjoying those streams. And holy shit, that game is gorgeous. Tales of Arise? Like, I thought Scarlet Nexus looked good, and it does, but Tales of Arise is beautiful. I'm so happy when you stream that game, Haseo, and I hope that you had a great summer. Um, it's great to see you in here, and I just wanted to make sure that we didn't miss out on an opportunity to say hello. Tetsuya Ida probably never realized Sentinel combat would get this rough. Even if we got another chance somehow, our chances of winning wouldn't be any better. Even the one they called 426 couldn't have predicted this. He wasn't exactly a nice cat, but <laughs> I trust him. You're right. No turning back now. All we can do is see it through. Oh, I would have been so on board if she said he wasn't exactly a nice cat, but I trusted him. And everybody else like, wait, what? <laughs> c c come again, Yakushiji? What, what was that about a cat? Can't mess this up. Oh, we can we can mess any number of things up, Juro. Don't don't sell yourself short. Okay. What can I do? Let's get some I enemy on the Hope I can pull my weight. Interceptors out. Your turn. Because they're about to land. Let's get some... You know what I don't bring enough of anymore? The sentry guns. Oh, more interceptors. Yeah. And then anything else? Action. Oh, yeah, Guardian. I mean, that's the whole reason that we brought this. Yeah, let's give them something to fight that isn't... Me. So, what's my next move? Uh, and and is saying that he's really enjoying uh, Tales of Arise. Sank has also been watching My Name is Earl again. I have a couple friends that absolutely swore by that show. Uh, and I actually am not very familiar with Let's it. Let's get him. Number 16, not throwing away my All right, and work. since everybody's coming down over here right now let's just uh let's bring our g1 on over here and make sure that we can uh greet them properly number 12 moving out where are they i won't back down you wanna oh wait 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 now we've got a bunch of guys coming in over here yes okay so let's get over number here nine. Perfect. He arrived right when I needed him to. Now, these are all... Nope, they're not all flying guys. In fact, a bunch of them are not. So, let's do... Oh, leap attack feels like a strong start. It's only going to hit the ground guys, but... Well, in that case... Yeah, maybe anti-air defensive flares as they try to move forward. Anti-air defensive you've done it. What's our plan? I won't give up. Take that. Remember your training. Alright, uh, we do have more guys coming in right here. 
and super large missile feels like a great idea right on all of these dudes. Senka says, uh, my name is Earl is, uh, something, uh, light and goofy to watch, um, and it has a nice concept as well of, uh, my name is Earl. All right, uh, clear torpedo right where these guys are coming down. All right, um, there's no big targets to do a heavy battery railgun on just yet. Is there anything else that I can use to set up? Not really, but I think this what we probably so want to do is move her back, because uh, a lot of her things have a minimum range to, to concern about. I gotta think. Oh, he has a sentry gun. Yeah. Let's get this, uh... So let's put this right in the middle between the two of them. It won't be able to hit both groups, but it'll always have something it can shoot at. Unbelievable. I'm acting like an amateur. Number 12, moving out. Yeah, no, I don't want her to move forward is the thing. So what can we do without moving? I can load it, lay down the shield matrix, but feels more efficient to throw up a flare torpedo right here. The nice thing about flare torpedoes is that it basically stops any of their long-range missiles from coming in. Oh, you guys, when I upgraded her, like, uh, super large missile, she fired one just on her last turn, and look, she o she's only down a handful of EP. As long as she murders sufficient kaiju, she can do this forever. Okay? Wait, how much did she just get back? She just got her entire bar back! All she has to do, as long as she has, sorry, I'm getting loud because I'm so happy at how effective she's going to be for us now. Okay. Um, flare torpedo. I don't want to do a flare torpedo right on top of these guys, but we also want to make sure that we're not leaving anything open. All of these anti-air defensive flares are really going to stop any incoming missiles from over here. So let's try to achieve the same effect over here with our... Flare torpedo. All right, um, flare torpedo here or here or yeah, let's really make it as unpleasant as possible for them to try to approach. Now, the difference for his multi-rocket missiles is he doesn't move forward to fire them, so I feel like this is going to be a good, uh, you know, firing for effect here. Now, Patikin has an interesting question I just saw pop up on Twitter. If you go back in time and watch the show for the first time again, what would you watch? Let me think about that, because I gotta say, my first response is not gonna be a popular one. Like, it's not even the one that I feel most strongly about, but my initial, immediate gut reaction is Angel. The Joss Whedon television series Angel, and I've talked about that in the past, that there is a point in that series where just everything comes together in a way that I find incredibly satisfying. It's like, all of the characters are so... I don't wanna... A Angel is an example of a television series that made me want to be a writer because I wanted to participate in the creation of something like that. But I don't think that that's my answer, and I'm going to have to think about it. I am struggling with the fact that he doesn't have any really good targets to go after with his Demolisher Blade from where he is. Okay, so I, I think that we're actually going to move him back. Okay, multi-locking missiles. Oh, I really don't want to move her forward, though. I think, if anything, I want to move her backwards and maybe put her into, um... Recharge I mode. Is it 
G4, so if he uses multi-locking missiles, he's gonna move forward. Let's put a shield matrix right here. Uh, and actually, uh, I take it back. Let's put a shield matrix as far forward as we can, because I want to try to um, protect Hijiyama for as long as we can. Shield them. Much obliged. Damn machines. They're in my way. All right, Let's that's see. no problem. It turns out you have a solution for traffic jams. It's called Demolisher Blade. Alternatively, uh, Rush Attack, which is free, and will knock these guys back, and I think really do a number on them, too. Okay, you were gonna put you into defend mode. Yeah, gosh, um, Alias was really good, but didn't end the best. Alias, oh boy, Alias go, Alias is extremely good right up until like a, a, a particular climax point that I don't want to ruin and then is never that good again. So I feel like Alias would just be disappointing. Uh, I have to say that from a community uh, standpoint, going through loss again, like if I'm the only one that gets to experience it for the first time, I don't think I'd enjoy that very much. But the experience of watching Lost with other people is something that I'm not sure. Now that we've moved to an era of Netflix where everybody binge watches every day all the time, I'm not sure that that will ever happen again, which is a little point of dis uh, It's a little bit disappointing, I gotta say. Sankas UK is gonna say, uh, I mean, Power Rangers gotta be up there. Uh, no lie. I was well past the age group that uh, Power Rangers was aimed at, and I straight up enjoyed Power Rangers. I, I to this day, I would love to talk to the people that uh, played Bulk and Skull in the original Power Rangers, because what was that like? Like, they were such like, 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 like juvenile, Bullies, like they were, they they were supposed to be like menacing bullies at first, but then we just sort of like p played for comedic effect, and they were on the show for so long, so much longer than they could reasonably have been high school bullies. But like, was it fun? As long as they had fun, that's what's the important thing. Okay. Um. I want to put out another Guardian, I think, because that last one really, really put them on their back here. Like, they were really, you know, everybody goes after the Guardian. Uh-oh. This guy's coming in at very high speed. Can we stop him from doing that? Oh, and the other thing, I like to point this out every once in a while just because... I, I, I've looked this up every once in a while. Please forgive me if this turns out to be incorrect or like in more recent years, he turns out to be a real scumbag. But the dude who played Tommy on Power Rangers, he was the, the Green Ranger. Spoiler alert for original Power Rangers. He was the Green Ranger and then eventually he became the White Ranger. And he's one of those guys where the actor has like three names. He's like David Thomas John or something like that. I, I don't remember his name, but that dude I, I read up on him uh, a few years ago. He like, he runs like a, a camp for disadvantaged youths. He does all sorts of like, um, he, as far as I've ever read about that guy, he is like one of the, he has dedicated his life to making the world a better place. He did a cameo in the last Power Rangers movie, did he? Just like the Pink Ranger, says, says Batikin. Um, sorry, I'm deciding where, if anywhere, to shoot a super large missile. Uh, well, let's fire the super large missile at the super large guy. Seems like it. She is not going to get all of this EP back, but I'm, I've made peace with that. Let's see. All right, let's move you really all the way back, I'd say. Yeah, see, like that drum mine is exploding against a guardian. It's a fake sentinel that they just, they hate so much. Okay, she is recharged. Let's fire some more interceptors. Their torpedo these guys yeah that's a good call because it's gonna block any missiles that they try to shoot and do damage to them and 
looks like this guy's gonna be dead before we go over to do anything about him. Let's fire some multi-rocket missiles at all those guys. Good, the only guy left is a shield generator and he's got nothing to shield generate against. Uh, can we rush attack him? Oh, he crushed that one. Aegis activated. Terminal closure complete. Surrounding two kilometer area now fully secure. Ending technical analysis. This is getting rough. Feels like it could all end at any second. So, Kisaragi? There's something I gotta tell you. Uh, He's force sensitive. I, uh. Oh, well, I. Like you. I. Now hold on! What? Seriously? Here? Now? You are such an ass! You have no idea how to do this! But. Hey, what are you talking about? I mean. We're still in open comms. Everybody can hear you. Kinda awkward. <laughs> what, that's bad? But this is how they always do this stuff in the movies. Uh, Ogatakun? I thought you sounded kinda cool. Sorry, Karabe, but that shit just makes me feel even worse. <laughs> Uh, you know why that's uncool? Because you're really putting a lot of pressure on the person that you're confessing to in terms of how they are going to react to this unexpected and potentially unwelcome expression of affection. Don't, don't do that. Don't put people on the spot that way. It is not cool. The fight is wow, Karabi and uh, Miura getting it done. How... Wait, how is Kisaragi not number one? Her her large missiles decimated them. Also, but you can say that Brian Cranston was Zordon in the last movie. I get the feeling that Brian Cranston just gets to do whatever he wants now, and what he mostly wants to do is have fun. I, by the way, Patikin, I have not seen the latest Power Rangers movie. That would make a great, um, like, a, a event thing to see with others someday. But I remember the trailer for that movie coming out. I've heard that, I've heard that it's not very good. I haven't seen it, so that's why I didn't, like, go looking for it. Um, but I remember when the trailer for that dropped, and, like, it looks so good. And then you're like... Wait, this is a Power Rangers movie? And I remember showing it to HW and specifically not telling him what it was for. And then when it became clear that it was a Power Rangers movie, he was so mad. And I was like, dude, like you were enjoying the trailer. Like, <laughs> like oh, I tricked him into watching a trailer for a Power Rangers movie. All right, uh, sorry, I'm... We want to make uh, some progress. So, um, you know what? Because I don't know how long the next uh, Goto thing is, we are going to go do the next Goto thing because that makes sure that we can be done before 8 p.m. Eastern, which is when we're going to be watching Kyber Shards on the More Than Amiya Discord. Before we do that, though, let's check our mystery points. Uh, Killian says, the first anime and first visual novel I ever saw, whatever they were, which are, those are ones that he'd want to be able to re-experience for the first time. I'm, I have to think about it more. Like, I really loved discovering Firefly, but, like, there's still only, like, the, the 12 episodes or whatever that is. Like, I'm not sure it's going to make me feel better to see it for the first time and then realize there will never be another. Um... The key to the apartment that Tomi Kisaragi lives in, a disc cylinder for a luxury apartment prepared by Shikishima in 1985. Disc cylinder. Is that a type of key? I don't know anything about locks, I guess. 
We're seeing what, if anything, has been updated. Guardian, second generation Sentinel support equipment, attracts Kaiju by sending out decoy signals to enemies around it, tricking them into thinking it's the terminal to draw their attention. Yeah, we just did that. It was great. Also, I thought it was pretending to be a Sentinel, but whatever. And... House key. Okay, so we've got three mystery points. Let's read about school bag. A bag that students use when attending school. There are a few variants made out of natural leather, mainly cowhide, or artificial leather. Inside Yuki Takamiya's flattened bag is a steel plate. <laughs> That's how you know I don't read ahead when I'm reading this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, Yuki has been my favorite character through most of the game, and learning that she keeps <laughs> a large steel plate in her bag to hit people with has not changed my opinion. <laughs> oh, that's great. Which only, by the way, makes me more angry that we don't get more scenes of her hitting people with her bag. How do they put that detail in the game and we don't have a scene of her just, just flattening somebody with that? Oh, it must be so heavy. Oh, I'm, so, okay, we're just gonna move on. Now I'm so, I'm so much more disappointed that we don't get more fight scenes with her. PE bag, a vinyl bag specific to the school. The material isn't the best. It's uncomfortable when it sticks to your skin on a sweaty summer day and it's cold to the touch during the winter. Boy, somebody on the development team is really venting their feelings about high school PE bags. All right, uh, UFO Mysteries. A special TV series that shows shocking footage and all the latest infos about UFOs. The entire series is presented documentary style. It is not a documentary. It's only presented documentary style. Although UFOs and aliens never actually end up appearing, the search for them is fascinating enough to carry the show. Yeah, uh, it must have been extremely frustrating for UFO researchers to uh, find that UFOs stopped appearing at the exact time that everybody got cameras on their phones. It's very inconvenient, that. Okay, this is, I believe, the last or maybe second to last story beat for the 13 playable characters. Let's do it. Oh. Renny Goto, oops. <laughs> Renya Goto claimed that Chihiro is the one who murdered Ms. Morimura. He, she is, we saw her do it. Chihiro aimed a gun at him. He knows too much. Initiating meta skill analysis. This shouldn't take too long. Whoa. I'll send you the data once it's ready. Uh, that would be great. But I must say, this is a surprise. Okino-kun really managed to push this through? Integrating this half-coded thing into the control system? Thank you. <sighs> no, well... Okino wanted to tell you that. Thank you. Okino-kun said that? He said the analysis wasn't complete yet. So he appreciates your help with all this. I see. To look at you, anyone might think you were just a child. But you must be a truly exceptional individual. The message was Okino's, and I'd like you to know I'm grateful as well. Now if you'll excuse me, I must return to the battle. <laughs> that boy. So he appreciates me, does he? Okino is Professor Shihiro's, or is patterned after well, Professor Shihiro's actual that son. that is a shame. This isn't ideal, but you know too much. Goodbye. You cannot shoot me with that gun. So anyone who knows the truth of Aegis is a liability to you. And liabilities must be dealt with. Does that sum it up? Yeah, there was never any danger that he was gonna have her with a weapon that he that she could shoot him. He knew too much. He came into this too prepared. If you recall, I specifically acquired this gun for your purposes. 
You had concerns about self-defense. I can guess what happens next. Now you're going to use it to shoot me. He could just throw you over the fence to your death. He doesn't need to shoot you. You're six. Perhaps I wasn't clear. For safety reasons, neither one of us can be shot with this gun. I configured it very specifically. Apparently I need to think about this. As I suspected, this gun records the time of its last discharge. And that time looks to be a near match for Miss Morimura's estimated time of death. Which suggests you use this gun to murder her. Wait, I'm sorry to be uh, m maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking about this too deep, but if the gun was configured so that neither Chihiro or Goto could be shot with it, why was Chihiro, why was young Chihiro able to shoot adult Chihiro? Maybe maybe the gun is extremely specific to but I mean like they have identical DNA. What is the gun looking at when it's aimed at Chihiro M Morimura unless he's lying? He could just be lying because people do that in this game, but that doesn't make sense to me. If the gun looks at your DNA, it's identical. If the gun looks at your age, what if she gets a year older? Can she then be shot with the gun? If the gun looks at... I don't even know what other thing that the gun would look at. How does the gun not know not to shoot her? He might be lying. That would make a lot more sense than that the gun won't shoot specific people, including the people that it recently shot. Now, on the day of the crime, you yourself were using the drone to keep tabs on Miss Morimura, weren't you? Based off of your expenses for that day, I presume you took a taxi to the crime scene. How much do you have in that pocketbook? <laughs> were you just playing dumb this whole time? Uh, also, Sam Lander saying, why would a gun show when it was last shot? That, I mean, if it was a, like a future gun, for safety reasons, like, I I want to let the scene play out, but you know what? Let's circle back to this. I feel like whatever I'm about to say is going to go for a while. When did you realize? What gave away that I was the professor and not her? I actually don't know the answer to her question, and I feel like I should, because didn't he go over it at an earlier point? That she... You know what? There was a specific moment. It was back when Miura found you here. You described Miura as an excellent design engineer. But the Miura of 2188 was the design engineer, not him. Did you dig that out of Renya Goto's log too? No. That I learned through Miura, the AI of Sentinel number 17. He also told me about the existence of the logs. So, what happens to me now? If you're not killing me, I assume you're at least locking me up? Considering what you did to Miss Morimura, I'm admittedly conflicted. But giving into my emotional reaction wouldn't solve anything. Vengeance isn't going to bring her back. So, with that in mind, I would rather choose the path that gets me closer to the truth. That is what I want now. To see what lies at the end of all this. To see what she never could. Wait, is his plan to just like go along with it? Like, all right, out of curiosity, I want to see where you're going with this, Shihiro? You told an obvious lie. You made it clear Juro Izumi was not your cup of tea. Yet you and Izumi shared an intimate relationship in the year 2188. That was clear enough from all the evidence I found. Even the placement seemed intentional. You and Izumi, together in Sector 1. You died before you could set up the memory transplant. At that point, I can only assume, Izumi sympathized with you and helped carry out your vision. I can certainly understand Kengo Ogata's motive. He just wants to live again. But you, why are you so intent on transplanting your memory? Because... 
There has to be a leader. Without someone to guide them, teams dissolve into fear, spite, resentment. It'd be the colony all over again. Hmm. I see. As I suspected. Your devotion to this goal is inspiring, in some ways. <sighs> Are you a gambling woman? I'd like to propose a bet. We'll leave the terminals alone for you. We won't let Aegis seal everything off. Your loop would still be viable. And in exchange? As it currently stands, it'd be impossible to revert to your original plan without some compromise. But consider this. Even this final phase won't truly be the end. We'll have plenty of struggles beyond it. Plenty more pain ahead of us. If we can prove to you that we will overcome that, if we prove to you that we can face the unknown, then are we not worthy to take up your cause, inheriting your goal, and seeing it through? You make an interesting point. We can solve this problem ourselves. So my proposal is this. Let us fight our war. No sabotage. If we fail, then I could hardly object to a reset anyway. That's your bet? You don't stand a chance. Well, I suppose we'll see about that. Really more of a proposal than a bet. Aegis activated. Is anyone too compromised to keep fighting? We barely had a moment to breathe. The girls may be pushing their limits. I'm still okay. I can keep fighting. There are three terminals remaining. We can protect two of them with Aegis. But we're on our own with the last terminal. How much longer do we need to hold out? We need to re-establish a connection with Miyuki Inaba. That's still ten hours off. Ten hours we don't have. But her plan is our last hope. Then we fight to the last. Until we have nothing left. The Kaiju are heading for the next terminal. Brace yourself, Keitaro. We are soldiers. And this is the moment we trained for. Hours. Days. It doesn't matter. We'll hold the line. Let's go. Son. You're listening, aren't you? If you're out there, please respond. Chihiro san. What is it now? You. You know a way to link up with the command ship. One that doesn't rely on its position, don't you? You're thinking of when I revise the decode. Right now, we need that shortcut. And this is where you reveal some new leverage over me. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what log you found this time. No. This time, I'm asking a favor. <sighs> you have to be joking. You do realize the position I'm already in? I do. All I can do is beg. I just want us to have a chance. This is the most idiotic... I lied to you, you know. Do you know which lie I'm talking about? Not this time. When I said I wasn't going to like you. Oh. You're an infuriating man, Renya Goto. Ready? Everyone, listen to me. We can communicate with the command ship out of range. I'm realigning the three surveillance satellites to their relay positions. We should be connected soon. However, the satellites have to move outside their preset tracks. You'll enter the gravity well and plummet to Earth. Your connection will only last until they hit the surface. 
You'll barely have any time to do this. Am I clear? Thank you. Honestly, humans can be so irrational. Though, I guess, I might be the most irrational one here. If you actually manage to pull this off, then I expect you all to take responsibility. Chihiro? Good luck, big brother. Almost connected. This is your only chance. Initiating communication. Okay, that's it. Uh, the last story beat. Now, uh, before we go on, I probably missed the opportunity, but Sanka UK... Oh, no, maybe he's still here. Um, he is going to turn in because it's very cold and miserable there. Uh, he says that it was very lovely catching it up. Uh, catching up. Take it easy and enjoy the rest of the stream. Mia, hope you get better and better. Sanka UK, thank you so much for coming by and hanging out. It was wonderful to have you in here uh, and participating in the conversation. And I hope you're doing well, and we will see you again very soon. Um, as we hit next, I'm curious what, if anything, might happen if we have everybody unlocked. Okay, I think it is just doing the, the combats now. So we're going to go take, yeah, 100%. Look at that. Check plus. We did it. Um, Samalinder asks, why would a gun report, record its la the last time that it was fired? And my initial thought is that that is a... Uh, a safety feature. Like, here in the United States, we have something similar with commercially available stun guns. I don't want to say if that is... if it's universal, but back when it came... back when they were first released, if you fired one, the cartridge that um, sent the, the little electric probes out, the little, like, electrified probes, um, would also burst open basically some confetti that was specifically designed to spread across the area, and it was supposed to be trackable to that specific stun gun. So uh, it was to make sure that people were firing in self-defense and not using it as uh, a less lethal method of attack against people. Um, so that kind of safety thing, I've sort of, we've seen an example of that in the United States. In Japan, they have much, much stricter gun laws than we have here. So for a Japanese game to say, well, we've got a phaser, it's a weapon of the future. What kind of features might we want to have? Yeah, the ability to know the last time that it was fired and, and safety features to say, well, you, you're not allowed to fire at this target would be extremely useful. Like, imagine if you had a gun here, but you were able to register, like, the members of your direct family so that if your college-age son came back uh, from college unexpectedly, you didn't mistake them for an, an intruder and shoot them. You know, that would that would be a nice option to have, I would think. Okay, so let's go do a uh, destruction mission. And uh, by the way, Sam Lander's also saying GG. Also, I, the scene was playing out and I didn't want to interrupt it, but I would like to congratulate Chivalry on coming up with the best explanation that I've ever heard for why we don't have more UFOs visiting us or as many as we used to back in the 90s. Uh, and the answer is, the 3G and 4G cellular reception is keeping the UFOs away. They're allergic to it. You see, their navigation systems can't swim through all of the G. So that's... I, I, I don't know if that's an existing theory, but if not, if, if that is something that happens and takes hold of the UFO investigation squads around the world, I just want to make sure that Chivalry is given full credit for inventing that completely true reason for why there aren't more UFOs around. Okay, clear without a sentinel being immobilized and clear within 60 seconds. I love it. So, let's take out people who are a little bit brain frozen, and let's put in the people who are less brain frozen. Okay. So, uh, we basically now get to choose who we don't want to have access to next time. And let's... Oh, that's all of our G3s? Yikes. That's a lot. Who are we dealing with on this one? Hordes of RPF and Apsos. So, yeah, those are, um... They're gonna generate swarms, and we need some fast response. So I'm gonna take out, uh... You know what? Let's have Miura, Miura and uh, Minami hang out with one another. And we're gonna have Takamiya and... 
and yeah, on a Gucci in there. And we want to have at least one G1, and it's going to be him. I'm on it. Yeah, Sam Linder also likes that explanation. It's a little bit like why do UFOs and Bigfoots get spotted around the same areas? And uh, it's because the Bigfoots are the pilots of the UFOs. Perfect. That makes perfect sense. You can't argue with logic like that. I've got 70,000 points. Um, I think what he doesn't have enough of is a generator. Or do I want to upgrade his interceptors? Interceptors are so good. Flare torpedo. Uh, and maybe his... No, you know what? Um, Shield Matrix is really good. And the lock-on range goes up. Yeah, let's upgrade his Shield Matrix a couple times. Uh, for Takamiya... I want to upgrade. I want to put more points. It's 9,000, but we're going to put more points into her armor because she puts herself into very dangerous situations. And then we want to upgrade her leg spike because we're going to need something that can really pound on the RPFs when they come in. And then maybe her arm-mounted pulse lasers as well. That's her free attack, and it can be very useful to have that upgraded a couple times. For Karabe, um... Is there anything else we want to put her in? Maybe maybe more interceptors for her as well. Moo says, quote, a little bit brain frozen seems to me like a little bit pregnant. It seems like an all or nothing type thing to me. I'm just double checking. Yeah, we've got 20 minutes. Sorry, I don't want to cut it short, but I do want to make sure that we do get a chance. So Missile Rain is really good at massive, like... Like, attack everything. Uh, main battery railgun seems like I might want to put some more points into that for this specific mission. Yeah. And, uh, I just looked at Karabe. So, he's a lower level than everybody else. How do I fix that? What can I give him that's gonna... Anti-ground multi-locking missiles sounds like a really good choice for him. Let's get that upgraded. Maybe twice. And... Mm. Anti-air defensive flares are extremely useful a lot of the time. I'm going to put that in place of leap attack, I think. And then upgrade it twice. Alright. And then... Yeah, because it's a G1, let's upgrade his actuator. And I'm actually gonna drop, oh boy. Mm, let's upgrade his fire control. Get him, get him a little bit more punch. Now, is there anything else that I wanna upgrade with uh, what the 20, 2,100 points we have left over? Uh, let's see here, nothing here. Main battery mega railgun. Love to do that, but we don't quite have the points for it. Let's upgrade his rapid cannons. You know, why not? Okay, let's do this combat. Of every confidence that we can do this in less than 20 minutes. We, we might even have time for one more, but we'll see. How many terminals we got left? Looks like four. <sighs> Nothing for it. Outnumbered as we are, we have to cover them all. It's the only chance we have. At least until Miyuki Inaba reconnects with us. Let's do our country proud, Amiguchi. Show these fiends the courage of Japan. I'll hold them back, no matter what. You're an inspiration to us all, Yakisoba Pawn Angel. <laughs> Hijiyama-san. Could you stop calling me that? Dymo signature's incoming. They're here. Looks like duty calls, huh? Exactly. That's the true pride of the men of Japan. The will to stare death in the face and laugh. Excuse me, but the ladies are kicking butt out here too. Hey, works for me. Kill my kaiju too. Knock yourself out. They're within range now. Gotta think. 
Oh, restored memories where it increases all stats automatically for Karabe. So, uh, so far we've only got one group of people coming in. So let's move her. Let's move her up. And for yeah, clear torpedo. We're gonna drop that right in there. Probably in just a minute, but let's get him within range. And do I have? We put down a guardian, but it's a little bit early. Let's get a sentry gun up. Yeah, we're going to put this sort of, uh, put it right here. Back me up. Yeah, What's Sam Melander's laughing at Yaki Sobapon Angel. I, I am a, I very much like that they chose to make that a thing. Um, oh, uh, is anybody else coming down? Yes, there is. So we're going to bring our G1 no back. Uh, where are you specifically? Back here? Okay. Let's get him uh, basically running down this road. And if I have anything else that I can put back there to help out, any other deployables, that'd be nice. I don't really see any things so far. Depending on what they bring down, EMP stunner might be nice. Gotta do something. Uh, let's actually bring you out here. I feel like that's going to give you some more options in what you... Do. And for you, it's just sort of wait around, What's isn't it? Number Number 11. Moving now. Okay, let's flare torpedo where they're coming in, and then as soon as we can, we will launch some. He's a little bit forward, though. Better let's put on a move show back. Number 20, moving out okay, the plan. and for you, let's take a second to launch some interceptors. How's the Sentinel? Better where are Hope I can pull my wings. Drop a flare torpedo right where they land. Well, what's the plan? The plan is as soon as this thing comes down, I want you to kick it to death. And oh, anti-ground multi-lock missiles would probably be helpful. But let's no room for hesitation. move sort of back back around here, and we'll come in from behind. Shot. All right, super large missile. Well, let's wait for... We've got two more enemies coming down, so let's hold off on super large missile. Uh, main battery railgun. I feel pretty good about this. Take that. Don't waste any chances. All right, for you, uh, demolish your blade on the big guy, if you would. Here goes. That work? Nothing special. Gotta keep it together. Um, yeah, I think, nope, 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 uh, main battery heavy railgun across those guys, especially the shield generator, see him, uh, right there, I want to make sure that we take that out as I soon as it. possible, last thing we need on these guys is more defense. No fight, I can't win. Okay, um, is it too early to leg spike? I don't think so, and I think that we're actually going to leg spike the Apsos guy first. Because we, again, get that shield down. How's that? Keep it up. What can I do? So, do I want to toss out a Guardian? Probably, because I feel like that's going to draw a lot of attention. Anything, we, and anytime that they're not advancing towards the terminal is a good time. Stay calm. All right, um, flare torpedo right here, uh, or interceptors. Let's find some interceptors. The other thing I like about interceptors is that they bypass armor, so it's just, you know, direct damage. Okay, can you demolish your blade? Oh, there's another guy here. All right. Well, who can I hit? That guy. No, not the twin tail. Where's the RPF guy? Ugh. Come on. We'll try to take out the, um, the shield generator guy first, but then, yeah. Uh oh. Wait, is this? That guy's about to explode. Balls. I don't think I have anything I can do about that. He's going to take a lot of damage from that. Yuck. All right, well, let's have to deal with it. 
Let's um kick this RPF. Nice. They're going for me. My spirits up. Uh, do we have any shields? Nothing. No. EMP stunner. Oh, is this gonna stop his? If this works, this might stop his uh, explosive. Hold up. Hit. I don't know if that worked. I think it reset the firing uh, thing. Firing countdown. Super large missile next round, then mega large missile, uh, and then ultra large missile. I would, can you imagine a missile bigger than the one that we're already firing? Let's go to, well, I guess we can. It's a big nuke. Yeah, let's hit all these guys. I like I like Carolina's plan a whole bunch. What a cow. All right. Um. Wait, what is he doing? Interceptors or flare torpedo? Um. I'll say kind of kind of a fan of flare Hot torpedo fight. right now. Hot uh, range. Okay, one RPF down. Yeah, there's one drill fly over there. You can go eat it. I don't care. Um, I need to take out these factories as soon as possible, and I don't have a lot of options to do that comfortably. But it is on the ground, so this should hit him. Okay, so uh, Sekigahara did take some damage, but not much. He's uh, he's pretty okay. Let's go. Okay, let's do this. Over here. I'm gonna try Another to kick that guy down. Okay, Sekigahara, all those missiles are coming in on you. So what do we do about it? Um, Anti-air defensive flares, except they're they're very very close. EMP surrounding is gonna mess him up and blow up all of those. Um, Missiles. Yeah. Oh. How was that? <laughs> They're oh, God, There's so many missiles. Better put on a show for you, <laughs> Just more missiles coming in. Um, shield Matrix, I feel like I, 100% is what I need to get on him. So we're going to sort of launch this over in his shield direction. Man. Thanks. Hopefully Don't the rest of those chances. missiles aren't going to be as effective. Uh, let's do... Anti-air defensive flares. The trouble is, again, they're going to sort of shoot. They're not going to be helpful in this situation. I think it's better to focus on destroying the factories. Did that do it? Target destroyed. Okay. What's the plan? Uh, the next plan is for you to kick this guy into the ground. How's that? Say your prayer. Keep it together. All right, are we ready for missile rain? No, not really. It's not actually going to hit most of the guys that I care about. Uh, main battery rail gun should take out all those missiles that haven't uh, impacted yet. Okay. All right, we are we are down to basically harsh language now. Uh, let's move you up a little bit so that we can make use of that explosive. We've taken some damage. It's not that bad. Let's leg spike the other factory to death. Nice. My turn now. All right, and demolish your blade. This RPF, if you would. I don't think that's gonna kill him, but good. The next one should. Torpedo is gonna like slow their rate of uh, um, and, and do some damage to them as they come in. Um, mega battery railgun. Look at how nicely they're lined up. Okay. Do we have anything left to leg spike? We do indeed. Yeah. Let's just finish this off. Uh, as always, the RPFs represent an ongoing danger because they will continuously generate more enemies. Uh, possibly good for driving up your score, less good if you're trying to finish it within one minute. Uh, Demolisher Blade. 
against that RPF again. Done. That work? How many left? I have okay. To focus. Uh, can you shoot some of those missiles? All those red uh, flares or missiles right there. And we're a little bit too far away. So. I guess all we can really do is try to move a little bit further before they actually get attacked. Shoot the missiles? Well, there's only one missile left, but I'll take it. Yeah, he has a shield. Or at least I believe he does. It's no reason to uh, accept the hit that you don't need to. Um, interceptors. Your turn. Get her into position a little bit more like spiking. This is exactly how I built Takamiya, by the way. Get in, kick something to death, move on to the next thing. Every once in a while, we don't like achieve that vision for her, but uh, anytime we can, I really enjoy it. Good, neutralized. I won't back down. Long range missiles aren't going to be effective as effective on a single target, uh, so we're going to main battery railgun it. Did I get it? Okay. What's right. the plan? And the plan? Leg spike. Nice. Keep it up. Gotta do something. Um. How's that? Gotcha. Is that it? Termination of enemy signals confirmed. Really, again, with that? I'm still okay. I can keep fighting. There are three terminals remaining. We can protect two of them with Aegis. But we're on our own with the last terminal. How much longer do we need to hold out? We need to reestablish a connection with Miyuki Hinaba. That's still ten hours off. Ten hours we don't have. But her plan is our last hope. Then we fight to the last. Until we have nothing left. The kaiju are heading for the next terminal. Brace yourself, Keitaro. We are soldiers. And this is the moment we train for. Hours. Days. It doesn't matter. We'll hold the line. So, no it, it took me a second, but... Right? That is the... That's part of the conversation that we actually saw at the end of Renya Goto's story, where he then got back on the line with Chihiro. Yeah, Samlander said that was quick. Yeah, Samlander, I don't know if you've seen... Uh, like, like so, Some of the combat scenarios got very challenging here in, like, the third tier. So I am ultimately very glad that I played on normal. I was... I was partially thinking, would I have enjoyed it better if I played on a harder difficulty level? And as the difficulty has sort of like swooped up, it, first of all, it was always about the story and the characters for me. So I was like, good either way. But as the difficulty has ramped up, I have had a lot of fun with it, but not felt frustrated. Oh yeah, and Sam Linder saw the one where I almost lost. Wh which one? Which of those? <laughs> There's been more than one at this point. Okay, um, let's bounce out of this. Uh, by this, what I mean is that we're going to very quickly take a look at the... Hold on, we, we also unlocked uh, Strawberry Crepes, so I need to see that. We, got, we did get the bonus objective, didn't we? Yes, we did. Okay, so without further ado, let's get over here, because it is about time for us to go over to the watch party, but let's just take a quick look. Jiro Izumi, 2188. The Izumi of 2188 shared an intimate relationship with Professor Morimura. Since Morimura died before she could execute the memory transplant, Izumi carries out her plan of transplanting her memories as Professor Morimura into her clone, Chihiro Morimura. But that's not 426. 426 is a different... Juro. Okay. 
The scar on Mira's forehead is the result of Tsukasa Okino's nanomachine adjustment, which restarts the Sentinels that stopped working due to DD-426. Without losing his mind and suffering the effects of DD-426, Mira managed to endure the pain as the data necessary for starting up the Sentinels was completed. Once Okino realizes this, he installs a feature so that the data will spread to anyone who comes into contact with Mira. Was that established at some point? I, I feel like we did find out about the scar on his forehead, but... Fucking what? <laughs> Where did that come from? I, I feel so bad when something like that comes up because we've been playing this game over such a long arc of time. I'm not sure if that was legitimately introduced or if I if that's new information. When Amaguchi was shot by Megumi Yakushiji up on the rooftop, it activated Sentinel number 20. Prior to this, Amaguchi had already come into contact with Kitaro Miura when he had to carry Miura back to his house after Nenji Ogata's altercation at the shopping district. For that reason, Amaguchi was already affected by the force activation code for Sentinels that Tsukasa Okino embedded into Miura. While the Sentinels couldn't be activated due to the effects of 44 DD-426, Okino got them operational again by creating a code that reconstructed the nanomachines to nullify the effects of DD-426. He then applied the code to Miura, Sentinel number 19, which led to the completion of the Sentinel activation data. Furthermore, he made it so that the completed data would spread to other pilots as long as they come into contact with Miura. Did he do this while he was alive or after becoming the AI of Sentinel number 21? Whichever one he's inside of. In 1945, DD-426 successfully disabled, was successfully disabled thanks to Okino's nanomachine reconstruction and K Kitaro Miura's efforts. Well, that answers that. It wasn't after he was dead. Or dead-ish. Moo made the point that, like, a little bit brain damage is like a little bit pregnant, or brain overloaded, whatever it was. But in this game, dead is... There's a lot of different degrees of dead, it turns out. Uh, Kira Luna says, he did lose. It was not um, S rank. True. That was a loss. We had to go back and correct it and did so successfully on the next attempt. That was a very fun and satisfying fight. Second generation Sentinel support equipment once places giant device shoots off numerous tiny drones repairing the damaged portions of nearby Sentinels. Uh, and... Let's play a little gambling game. Oh, strawberry crepes. This cream-filled crepe is a bargain considering how many strawberries you get for the price. Iori Fuyasaka, Tomi Kisaragi, and Miwako Sawatari enjoy this on their way home from school, known for a shell that's sweet and crispy up top while soft and moist at the base. That does sound good. Let's play a little bit of a gambling game, because I need to stop post-haste, but I do want to spend my mystery points so that we won't have to do it next time. So let's learn about hot dogs. The hot dog, a popular dish that consists of a puffy hot sausage placed in the middle of a slightly sweet bun, topped off with a sharp scent of mustard and bold chili sauce. Seems like a chili dog, but okay. Iori Fuyasaka, Tomi Kisaragi, and Miwako Sawatari enjoyed this on their way home from school. And then, how about canned soda? That can't be a very long report. Valkyrie is a canned soda that Nenji Ogata found for Tomi Kisaragi in the 2025 ruins. No matter how tired you are, one sip of this energy drink will recharge you instantly. And every bottle, every can comes with a free feather. You might want to pull that out before you drink it, but that's a thing. So let's save it. And we are going to go find somebody fun to raid. You guys, I firmly believe chili sauce is the hot sauce, not chili the stew. Okay, that explains it. So it's not actually a chili dog. Um, I believe that next episode, number 24, will be our final episode of 13 Sentinels. And um, we raid when we can uh, and stream for as long as we can. I can only say that it would... I, I, I hope that to see us through and to uh, celebrate the end and to catch what I hope to be a thorough um, recap of what I believe the story to be as thoroughly as I can deliver that information, I would very much hope that we get not only so many of our stream regulars that I enjoy it when we get to hang out with Samalander and Carolina and blah 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 and more than a Mia and um, 
uh, Ricardinho, uh, Ruination Ronin has been here for so many episodes. I think it'll be a lot of fun. But also some of the new friends that we've made along the way. Epinomenon, Zozo, Agathos, people that have played this game before, who have been extremely respectful about not spoiling anything, listening to my theories, knowing which ones are correct and how many of them have been wrong. Uh, it would just be very cool if they were also here because uh, they love the game. I would love to hear more about what they, how they feel about it. They seem to be fans. Um, what they were right about, what they were wrong about, what was the most shocking twist for them. Uh, I would love to have a chance during our closing credits and beyond to have that conversation because as with every game that we finish, we get one shot to cover all the topics and that's in the finale because after that, it would be a spoiler if we're talking about it in another stream. Let's jump over to Sorry BTR. It's going to be a little bit of a raid and run as we join more than a Mia sandbox discord for the latest episode of kyber shards and fluffy magic cat also you also you uh, i am out of time you guys thank you so much and we will see you again hopefully as early as tomorrow for the big finale until next time i hope you have a great day